Welcome to the first episode of the Faster Than Lightspeed podcast. I'm your Captain Kenny with my XO, Joey. This podcast is a way for us to share some of our discussions about the things we love. Um, this generally includes science fiction, comic books, movies, video games, and other pop culture mediums that often involve in-depth world building. We hope that you enjoy our discussions and arguments about the various topics we are going to be covering in the future. So, Joey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yes. Don't have to work, which is which is good. It's a nice, relaxing time. You know, probably will watch a movie tonight. Okay. 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 Yeah. Joey, well, what's, what's our topic today, Joey? Oh, today we're gonna go be discussing a science fiction showdown. Okay. Where each of us will create a list of matchups of different pop culture figures. Joey, you don't read off of the that format, fight. Joey. I read off the find location. I read off the format, Joey. I, you don't read off the format. I don't read off the format. <laughs> no. We're doing we're we're doing matchups. We both got some matchups. Yeah. And we'll be talking about them. Yeah. Why don't I? I feel like we're actually gonna end up agreeing, except for one, which I'm absolutely we're not going to agree. Um, and that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah, you kind of already read it, but yeah, today our topic is, it's something to kind of help our audience audience get to know us, right? Yeah. And yeah. our opinions on certain subject matters. Yeah. Um, yeah, we each are going to, we each have created already a list of matchups in terms of different pop culture characters that will fight in perhaps a defined location. I'm going to say our default location is like a school gymnasium. A school gymnasium. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Just kind of a empty room but it's also got a roof so you know you can't just say somebody immediately flies into space or whatever that waits forever yeah yeah <laughs> he just waits for the guy to like roll it's, it's sometime it's somehow it's yeah it's contained to a degree but that can always be changed depending on the situation um so these discussions will often encompass things as abilities right so like for superman example he can fly laser vision um equipment so for batman you know his equipment um, perhaps vehicles, if necessary, for that as well. And their known strategies that we have been witness to in whatever medium we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess with that, let's just dive into it. So we're going to start with a matchup from your list, Joey. So okay. What is your first matchup? Okay. This, this is one where I think we are probably going to agree. Okay. But Omni-Man... Versus Homelander. Omni Man versus Homelander. Yes. So Omni Man from Invincible. Yes. Right, the latest. Well, yes, we don't. We don't. We can never actually say Invincible. We just have to wait, wait for the title card to show up. Oh well, you have to be about to say it, We're... and then the title card Invincible, and then there's some yes. like, blood spatter on it. Wow! In order to take on this episode of the podcast, you must have to be. That's, okay, time to move lame. on. Yeah, that's lame. No, 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 that's 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 the bit. We're the, <laughs> so we have to wait for the time. You're doing two Amazon, so like Superman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Superman variants, we'll just call them. Okay, so we've got Omni Man, which is, I guess, spoilers for Invincible, who is an alien from Viltrum, right? Yeah, who just can fly. Right, and we've seen Omni Man destroy entire. Like civilization, civil, and uh, at least one civilization, yeah, and it's probably uh, also been in, <laughs> taken part in, others as well, because we don't even know how old Omni Man is right now, do we? And then you have Homelander, right, which is the sort of stereotypical. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to be a superhero, but he's also very emotionally weak, right? Yes. I mean, who do you? We'll start off with this since your matchup. Who do you think would win? I think. I think Omni Man has to win, but Homelander does. I think might be faster. Might be. Homelander is faster. Did you I say? would say might be faster. I don't think so. I also Homelander also has laser vision. Yeah, but I don't know. Potentially, does more it... invincible. As we see Omni Man when invincible. the Flax when the Flaxons invade, they have like laser weapons, yeah. and they have like. Oh, who knows, like 45 of them shooting at Omni-Man at the same time, and he doesn't even flinch. So I don't know if Homelander's laser, laser vision is going to be much of a 
difference to that yeah. is really going to knock Omni Man around at yeah. all. Uh, it would be because we haven't really seen. Because the difference would be also that we have not seen Homelander off his leash at any point. No. Like officially off his leash, where he's like. I'm going to wipe out the world. <laughs> I'm going to be a nuclear event. Yeah. When we've seen Omni-Man, when he goes into the other dimension, destroy the Flaxons. We also don't know the comic books for Invincible, so we can't reference I that I also haven't all. seen season two of The Boys. That's true. Um, yeah, just based on what we know, I think the obvious choice would be Omni-Man. I think Omni-Man could also really emotionally destroy homelander yeah just yeah i don't think homelander has too much of a chance so yeah omni man is probably the definite winner for that fight right i agree yeah yeah i i don't know i just, i would i'd be rooting for homelander though why would you root for homelander i thought you said omni man was dad of the year when you finished that show well i, I don't know when as opposed to omni man or homelander is homelander He's a dad. I haven't He's seen a dad. He's yeah. a dad. Oh, but, yeah. Like, you haven't seen season two. Why are you in the Smash Up? Because you haven't watched season two. What, what else would he do? I know his power. This is his overall character, you know? I just don't see him do even worse things. Uh, he, has, he has fantasies about lasering down a crowd of people. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we'll give that to Omni Man. Okay, we're going to get into. One of mine. Let me look at my list here. I'm going to start off with a video game oriented one. Okay, this one might be a bit tricky. Okay. Mine is the Master Chief from Halo um, versus the Dragonborn from Skyrim. Master Chief. Your thoughts, Master Chief? Really? I thought you would have gone for the Dragonborn. No. Okay. You don't think. I, I think I would probably think Master Chief as well, although it's tough. Depends on how guns affect the Dragonborn <laughs> in terms of, you know, how, say, a battle rifle. I would say, in terms of Master Chief's um, equipment, I would say he has the bubble shield, probably sprint as well. But, like, let's, and, like, a battle rifle. Let's maybe. make this clear, okay? Like, we're not going to have the Dragonborn do, like, exploits or glitches to just well, max no. out his but armor and stuff. We would say that he has, like. Yes, the most over. The like he has legit. And how many like shouts does he have too? He has to wait for the cooldown. You'd have to think about the shouts too, right? Let's say end game. Like, where are some shouts that say the Dragonborn would try to use on the Master Chief? Oh well, if he's if he's flying around in a spaceship, he would probably use Dragon Rend. Well, no, it's not. We're saying that the Master Chief is they're in a, they're in a gymnasium. <laughs> they're in a gymnasium. <laughs> they're in a school gymnasium. Okay, they both. But then it'll be too open. Then the Dragonborn can probably win. Hmm? The dragon porn can just turn into probably a werewolf or something, right? No, I'm not. I'm not including abilities that say you would get from what the faction storylines or the guild storylines, because to me, that's crazy to have the to say that the actual dragonborn is also the listener, and what the harbinger for the companions. I forget the guy, and um, where they call for the thieves that he's also the master of the thieves guild. Yeah. <laughs> A you night know. rend or something like that? <laughs> yeah, all that. A nightingale. A nightingale. Yeah. You can't say that he's all of those. I would say that he has shouts. So he... You could say he has all the shouts. And he has, like, fully upgraded armor. So whatever kind. Right. Mm. But he also has, like, a sword and a shield. Right? Sure. Now, can a sword and a shield <laughs> defend against plasma grenades? <laughs> right? I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> plasma grenades, right? Yeah. Although I would say the most powerful thing would be slow time, right? Maybe. That'd be like the shout that could make or break that fight. This unrelenting force. I I still think that's probably one of the most powerful shouts in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you put down a bubble shield, right? Mashi puts on a bubble shield. Does was it Fusro Da? Does that still can that go through a, a bubble shield? Does just wind in general go through a bubble shield? I don't know. I uh, wind. No, I would say no. I would say no forces generally penetrate that unless it breaks. Grenades can't go through them. Right. So I would say... Right. It wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So you, you also would think that Master Chief would win yeah, that Yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing with that one. <laughs> really? Okay. 
a better argument would be like if you do something from Fallout, like the Soul Survivor and his power armor. That's like way too general. That's like even more general to me, though. Yeah, but even and I, I don't I, know Fallout. I would also also Dragonborn would be more powerful than that. Everybody mutually agrees with that, though. Sure. Because because sure. you got like this, basically, descended, like astral figure that just kind of inhabits this one guy. Like, of course, no mortal man besides Master Chief, as we just stated. Probably take him out. Okay. I thought you were going to do the good old Master Chief versus Doom guy. No, that's too... That's, like, the same person, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just guys in power armor. I didn't want to do just guys in power armor fighting. That's also why I leaned away from looking at a Fallout and how that would work, because it would just be two guys in power armor <laughs> punching each yeah. other. Yeah, and also you haven't really played the Fallout games. You yeah. played... You played up until you where you met the Minutemen. Yeah, Fallout. I don't... Yeah, Fallout 4. I have to, yeah, whatever. No, you know, I think you meant Paladin Dance, I think. I don't know. I think you did. I don't even remember. All right, so we agree Master Chief wins that one. We've also said that um, all the discussions that we... All of our decisions that we make are final. Uh, but if you feel feel that we miss something, then okay, you win. I feel like a lot of people are just going to disagree with our last <laughs> one. I you feel win. like we made a mistake. I think we made All a right, mistake. All right, guys. <laughs> whatever you just said, whatever shout you just said, you're right. You win. <laughs> <laughs> you win. You know what? You guys make the decisions. No, we can't say that. That's anarchy, dude. Anarchy? Yeah. That's anarchy. You know what? The viewers always win. So what's your next matchup? <laughs> okay. Now, this is this is a fun one. Okay. Okay. I was really, really trying to figure out who to do this. This is a space aerial combat one. Okay. Space. Okay. And it's also my three-way one. So, which one do you think would win? Starbuck from the original Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Starbuck from the reboot Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Or Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, what era Obi Wan Kenobi? Attack of the Clones, which was what I was thinking. Attack of the Clones. Because <laughs> you know that he. Well, like, let's just say you know I don't think he gets any better in between movies. You know. Between Revenge of the Sith and that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of when, how much he dogfights in, like, Clone Wars, but he pretty much stays out of dogfights. Because he hates flying. He's so good at flying, though. It's not like he's terrible at it. He's, he, well, do you know, in the book Master and Apprentice, they, like, go into why, like, when he was a very young Padawan, like, when he was just assigned to Qui-Gon Jinn, he loved flying. Like, he found peace in it, and then he had, like, kind of a... I guess he considers it a traumatic ex- experience. <laughs> um, what kind? Com- what was this? From this was in Master and Apprentice. Oh, by sure. Claudia Gray. That's are we, like. Are we saying that's canon? Are we saying that's canon? That's hundred percent canon. Yeah. Yeah. Same with the the canon comic books. Kenny? It's canon until something in like a show or something. Um, how would you say contradicts it? Yeah. And that's how. That's what it's been said. <laughs> I I I all that could just get retconned. It could, but I don't know. Um, so you were saying Starbuck OG, which is hard, which we can't really, we've never seen him really dogfight. They use the same five clips just over and over right. again. But I would say he's probably just as good as the reboot. That was Well, then why'd you even match them up if you're saying that they're the, that they're the same? <laughs> because... Because also the ships in that world operate on a whole, it almost feels like they operate on a whole different level of physics. As opposed to in... Do they? Yeah, 100%, yeah. Do they? Yeah, because you just... Cause you, I mean, because we don't get to see them. So I'm assuming they just can dive one way. <laughs> they can only dive to the left and shoot their <laughs> guns. I don't know no. why you picked that. <laughs> that. That's great. Should we just say it's one Starbucks? As opposed to We can just Starbuck, say it's the original Starbucks. As opposed to... Just... um, Was it... I forget what year, but... Uh, Katie Sackoff, Starbuck, we'll say who can literally spin her ship on a, like, in place and shoot behind her. We've, okay. like, seen her, yeah. So, I mean, she... It's that's like saying... That's like putting Sean Connery James Bond up against Daniel Craig James Bond. One of them's gonna try to judo chop, the other one's gonna pound his face into a sink. Yeah. <laughs> until he's dead, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Sure. <laughs> that's, like, that type of matchup. Because mm-hmm. they just operate on totally different levels of... <laughs> Like ability. <laughs> well, one of them's just gonna drink his problems away and just hope that someone else fixes it. You know, <laughs> I have to wait for Roger Moore to show up. And then, and then you're saying Obi Wan Kenobi. 
Because again, Star Wars operates on a whole different physics level for its starfighters. Where like when George Lucas was making was like making almost test footage, he was just using footage from like old war World War Two like shots of like mm-hmm. I'm assuming like P fifty ones doing banks, like doing banking turns. And that pretty much transfers throughout most of the movies. Yeah. You know, maybe the sequels, it's a little different. Like, the physics is a bit more expanded, but even still, it's, like, fairly close. And again, and something that BSG does pretty well is that they really... The physics is a bit more space-like in terms of how you can maneuver and stuff. It's not super realistic, say, like, The Expanse. But it's, like, more realistic than a Star Wars. I, I would probably say... It would just it would be up to how the force if the force wants Obi Wan to win, Obi Wan will win. Really? You're leaving it up to that? <laughs> I would say that, yeah. That would be yeah. Yeah. That's such a lame answer though. What as- you're saying that Obi Wan also has R four no, as sorry, an Sorry viewers, you don't actually get to decide who wins. The force does. <laughs> does the force does. Does Obi Wan because what which fighter are you saying he you're saying Attack of the Clones? Yes. As well, right? So it'd be his Jedi. Right, you're saying it's that, uh, what was the, the triangle ship. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, the one, because it also needs a hyperspace ring, right? But it's not like, uh... It's, we're not leaving... Which one has range? What's the better range? Because now we're also talking about starship specs. <laughs> Does a Jedi fighter's blasters have a farther range than a Viper? A ship's Viper? a ship. A ship's a ship, Okay. <laughs> Let's just we see them how they move. We're saying that we're saying that a Viper was a Mark Four Viper. I forget sure, what they're called. Sure. What the market is, but that one of those Vipers is on the same scale as a Jedi Starfighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Sure. So then it's just yeah, pure skill versus the Force, <laughs> and which one wins? Obi Wan's still a good pilot, you know. He's like, okay. He think he got. Stinking bunched up by buzz droids, though. Yeah, uh, obviously, if I said like a th- Anakin, and he can survive, he can survive getting attacked by yeah. Jango Fett, but you don't see him yeah. take out Jango, yeah. disable Jango in any way. Yeah. If I said Anakin, obviously, hands down, debate over Anakin. Sure. Even yeah. Luke Skywalker, I would say. Yeah, sure. But Obi Wan Kenobi, perhaps, just kind of your more not necessarily space trained master Jedi. Right. I gotta go Starbuck. OG Starbuck, because... <laughs> no, that's because that's dumb. <laughs> we'll just say Starbuck in general. The idea of Starbuck. I say that I don't know. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so we'll go with yours. <laughs> say... There we go. 19 was... What Sorry, was viewers. It? I know everybody loves Obi-Wan Kenobi. I love Obi-Wan Kenobi, too. 1982, Battlestar Galactica. Who cares? Nobody watched 1982? that show. It's 1970. 1970- 1979? Okay. 78? Nobody 78. Cares. 78. Yeah, nobody cares. 78. Yep, it's 78. You're the only one that cares about that show, so... <laughs> the Return of Starbuck episode? Coming out. Eventually. Okay. No, we're not doing that. Okay, There's so... Return of Starbuck? I'm cutting this out. No, no, you're not cutting this... You're not cutting out this Okay, so it. my next mashup... Matchup, okay? Return of Starbuck. Is going to be... Hmm, I've got a couple good ones here. I'm going to do, how about Captain Benjamin Sisko versus Grand Admiral Thrawn in a strategic fight. So this is a space battle. They both have to. Mm-hmm. One has, yeah, one would have, I would say Thrawn has the Chimera, chimera fully kitted out Chimera. So his flagship Star Destroyer. And Sisko has, should Sisko have the full of Deep Space Nine or just the Defiant would you say both both <laughs> well then we might as well say that <laughs> we could say that Thrawn has the whole of the Seventh Fleet then, then Cisco has all Starfleet no he's not an admiral <laughs> he doesn't have if we're he's saying he's basically in charge of the if war. we're saying what they're under the command of okay which would mean Thrawn has command of I think it's the Seventh Fleet we're very much okay versus Cisco. So Thrawn has Deep Space has, Nine defined, right? So Thrawn has command of the Seventh Fleet, right? Correct. And Cisco has DS Nine and the Defiant, right? 
So Cisco's greatly outnumbered in the school gymnasium. How are we gonna? How are we gonna? How are we gonna decide this? this you, sucks. Know, you know, no, we're not. <laughs> it's that, all this in the school gymnasium. This is a space fight. We're saying that this is Thrawn. There has been an there has been an anomaly with the, get get off your phone. You're looking at your phone. Black. We're saying that through the wormhole, the Bajoran wormhole, something comes through. It's not the Dominion fleet. This is it is the seventh fleet under the command of Grand Admiral Thrawn. This is where the space rails took Thrawn mm -hmm. <laughs> through the Bajoran wormhole. Mm -hmm. um, except not. Um, yeah. This is, and then it's Ben Sisko on the other side with Deep Space Nine. We'll say this is what season three, Deep Space Nine. At least. Season three. Well, season three is when it actually has weapons and stuff. I don't think it gets crazy upgrades after that, does it? Why does it matter? It has to be particularly season three. I'm just saying it's. I'm just saying okay, it's the Deep Space Nine with the weapons and stuff. Because before season three, it doesn't have well, I, the I, weapons I know, and I know, stuff. I, know. I think a tractor beam, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's got like it had like six torpedoes in the pilot episode. They say, mm -hmm. right? So he has Deep Space Nine along with the Defiant, which is considered one of the best warships in Starfleet. The only yeah. warship, the first warship. Yeah. And we'll say that it's also the Defiant that isn't going to come apart at the seams because it's too powerful. Right? Which one wins? So. I say if the Force or the Prophets want their <laughs> chosen faction to win, it will happen. What's your answer? Because apparently, because we're just going for you on this one. I'm going to say that. Because Deep Space Nine is really powerful, right? Yes. Defiant also has a cloaking device. And we know Star Wars cloaking device, th devices are quite powerful. They're. They could be. Except, unless Thrawn has studied Admiral Trench and how to track cloaked ships. No. You don't think so? We're getting what if you don't think... We're getting what if scenarios. Okay, sure. we're, not, we're not touching that. All right, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. In the Thrawn books, he actually does have experience with cloaked things. Is that canon, though? Yeah. Is, it, is the canon in the book? They're a Timothy Zahn, Joey. <laughs> I doubt they're going to retcon stuff like that. People, I hope not. They always push those books more, I think, than the canon comic But yeah, books. He, does have, he does have experience with cloaked vessels in those books. Maybe that's just like a Klingon cloaking device. This is a Romulan cloaking device. Well, those... I don't know, Joey. Those were Grisk cloaking devices. Yeah. That I don't know <laughs> much um, about. My my think of how Cisco would actually win, where he would trick the Romulans into joining the fight. No. No, we're saying this is instantaneous. This, this isn't... isn't this then isn't, it doesn't uh, matter. This then isn't, it doesn't matter. This is not a five-year battle. <laughs> I'm saying it has to be like four years. A four-year war between yes. the seventh yes. fleet. I don't think you can. I don't think you can have this mashup because they're not just one fight kind of people. But we're saying that it is one fight, though. I don't think. It, I don't think it should. No, we're saying it's. I'm saying if they got into a war, we're saying if the two Cisco would win. No, nah, I don't think so. Cisco is scrappy. Do you want to say that the two are prepared? They know that they are limited to these resources. They're prepared. Thrawn knows that he's going to go through this wormhole and appear at Deep Space Nine. Yeah. And Cisco knows that he can't get any other ships. He can't get reinforcements. He knows that he's he has Deep Space Nine. I don't think he would do that though. Could Cisco put up self self replicating mines? Maybe if he has the time to prepare. Oh, he would yeah. mine the wormhole again. Oh yeah, he he's would. willing to do that, isn't he? He would blow up the wormhole. <sighs> he would. When yeah, he. Probably he turns would. to blow up the wormhole like eight times throughout the show. So yeah, that's true. Let's say that's not optional, because then you're just negating the fight. <laughs> Cisco would do it though. I'm telling you, like you're putting things out of Cisco's way. If we're doing pure military strength and force, the technology is on Thrawn's side. But in order of Cisco wanting to win and wanting to get his hands a bit dirty, he will win. Because Thrawn has been known to also send troops forward in order to test an enemy's defenses, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he would send maybe like a Star Destroyer first, or like a couple light cruisers first through the wormhole. Maybe those get blown up by the mines or whatever, right? And then he 
figure out some plan to destroy those. I don't know what you can do about self self replicating mines though. No, you're pretty much trapped. You're almost trapped. Um unless you use like ion bombs or something to disable them. Either way, I'm telling you, if the force wants Thrawn to win, Thrawn wins. If the prophets want Cisco to win, but the thing Cisco is, yeah, that's something else to say. Thrawn does not have the force on his side. Yeah, Cisco has the prophets, has the prophets like, but the prophets don't do anything outside the wormhole. Oh, I got you this. Okay, you go through the wormhole, right? Thrawn, Thrawn's army, but they get brought to the mirror universe. They just never. They get, they get brought to the mirror universe. They're gone. Ooh, that'd be a question. <laughs> Thrawn versus the mirror universe. <laughs> You'd be like, "Where's Cisco?" And Cisco's like, we're waiting for them to come over, but they're, they haven't come quite but yet. But Cisco's dead in that universe as well. Yeah, but who cares? They have to be Smiley O'Brien. Yeah, but they just they just show up on the other side of the wormhole. It's like, they'll they just be something in the universe. You know what? That's my answer. The prophets. You think the prophets just would divert them? Yes. <laughs> it's a pretty cop-out answer. Okay, who wins? Obi-Wan Kenobi or Starbuck? You tell me. Because you gave a cop-out well, answer. Starbuck. <laughs> okay, cool. Fun. We'll say BSG Starbuck. Yes. Which which BSG? Doesn't matter. They're both the same. Only, you know, one significantly better. But skill-wise, on the ship... Do you know what? Reboot Bowser Galactica. Starbuck is kind of an alcoholic. Okay. So. Is the other one not? No. He's just a player. He's a gan... He... He's he the exact. He's pretty close. He gambles, and it's just not as realistic. Though. Yeah, but oh yes, I love watching. Why are we going back realism. to this? <laughs> back to this topic. All right, what's your next matchup? My next mashup. Okay. Okay. Why? It's sound. It's sounding like you're saying mashup. Mashup. Yeah. Yeah. Match up. I'm saying mash. Is it not mashup? No. It's not matchup. It's mashup. Oh, what's your next one? Okay. Joker, Arthur Fleck, right? Okay. And it, like all of his like you know, oh, what would you call him? His fans, his okay. imitators. Sure, Versus... imitators. Yeah, I like that one better. Yeah. Versus, um, Penguin from Gotham, or Fish Mooney. From Gotham. Yes. So from the prequel show Gotham. Yes. Uh, Arthur, I mean Penguin. Because Arthur Flex is a stinking idiot. <laughs> is he though? He can't even run. All right, he's he's just to run those big those big clown shoes. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's not smart in any way. Penguin at least like figure knows how to work his way up from being an umbrella boy to the actual crime boss of Gotham. Yeah, he's he is a survivor. Arthur Fleck doesn't even have a plan. Arthur Fleck, he he has a plan. No, he has no plans. Ever. Yeah. He just kind of does... Things just kind of happen to him. No. What do you mean, no? He stands up for for women. That's his plan. I don't know. You're okay, you're about. next. I, I agree. Penguin wins. But only because... Only because... Arthur Fleck is just stuck in an insane asylum and he, and he was never released to begin <laughs> he with. He was never released to begin with. <laughs> That's the only reason. Otherwise, he wouldn't. I'm still, I'm still pretty sure that, yeah, a lot of that movie didn't happen because, it's, I, it, because of that it, last scene. Because happened. of that last scene. So, oh. I believe the entire movie was basically pretty spot on, like pretty self-going, except he wasn't stopped at the very end and released. And it kind of just like, he actually got brought and that's the point where he goes at. But you know what? We'll never know. We'll never know. Because, because I feel like if there was going to be a sequel, sucks. they would have announced it already. <laughs> Alright, my next matchup, okay? I'm kind of excited about this. Star-Lord from the MCU. Because we don't know anything about the comic book Starbuck. Or Star-Lord. Star-Lord versus John Crichton from Farscape. Both being uh, people, or humans, kind of thrown into these wacky space universes. Um, I would suggest to any of anybody listening to this who has not seen Farscape, very good. Watch Farscape. You <laughs> used use Farscape as my senior quote. Um, look oh, upward this right. year in the wonders I've seen, and to my knowledge, Ashley put into the yearbook. Yeah, <laughs> I heard. I, t I asked somebody who was on the yearbook of music. Yeah, I think that one got in. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm I'm shrugging my shoulders. I can't wait to go look read the yearbook because if I got a Farscape quote in there. Farscape, really good, really good alien prosthetics. But yeah, it's also, but yeah, two 
it's a very because John Crichton, an astronaut, as a as opposed to Star Lord, who more was like raised in space, right? Yeah, Star Lord, John Crichton, in like kind of already in his like physical prime, you could mm-hmm. say was kind of thrown in, or his, like, peak sort of maturity, right? Mm-hmm. Was thrown into this otherworldly universe and is stuck with a bunch of crazy aliens. Yep. <laughs> throughout the course of the show, John Crichton goes insane. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic show. Who do you think wins this fight? Okay. I know we're just... Cut- okay, you know what? This is, this is the Farscape segment, okay? Farscape, 10 out of 10 show for what it's trying to do. Yeah. Okay, but now I see on the... Mash up, okay. Um, I gotta, I gotta go with John Crichton. Yeah, I love, I love both characters so much. They're both really. I good mean, characters. Starbuck. I mean, Starbuck. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Star Lord. Okay, he basically is a demigod. That's what they kind of make it seem, right? But he loses those powers. I'm not, and yeah, we're not including and he's those on that powers. Planet. He's on that planet. I think he has to be on that planet to get his powers. True. Well, like the full extent, rather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. what what movie Star Lord are we saying this would be? Like post, uh, like matter. Infinity War. Or, it doesn't matter. We would, uh, yeah, sure. we would say Infinity War. I don't think I don't think he becomes less or more powerful. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have crazy progression. He just becomes like really powerful for like five minutes. Yes, and then gives up his powers to kill his dad. Yeah, to kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I got to go with to kill uh, ego. John Cren. Otherwise, I'd probably go with Star World Lord, but the fact that he has Scorpius on, in his head, he would have like a super genius oh. tactician military commander. So you would say that, okay? Because don't forget, we got little Harvey in there. You, you, you can't do this without me, John. Yeah, yeah. Because you're saying he would have the imprint of his like villain in his head, yes. like he does in the show. Yes. Okay. And he would, and he's oh, look. Har- remember, remember that one episode where they went back in time to like the Peacekeeper battle and stuff harvey well like all right we're gonna get i think you i think it was very much in favor of let's get these troops out or something right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what could also be because john Crichton like will stink and nuke himself all his friends and the enemies in order yeah, to yeah, like get yeah. the last laugh yes <laughs> he goes insane <laughs> like he will do whatever to like get these guys that are ch- these like evil these like space empires to stop chasing him <laughs> he will do whatever it yeah, takes yeah but let's say he's in a school gymnasium <laughs> <sighs> then you have star lord who star lord has like the equivalent the, uh, the equip the equipment advantage where mm-hmm. he has multiple blasters and he has like these little gadgets these like gravity gadgets right mm-hmm. um what else does he have yeah, he has a he has a helmet. I don't know what that helmet really does besides. They can breathe in space. Right. When John Crichton really only has a blaster, though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, has... Scorpius, which is his. Basement. But is that enough though? To like in the moment. He also has the wormhole device. Right. Well, then we might as well say that he has that nuke on his chest. That he's like, if I die, yeah. we're both getting nuked. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. I still say I don't know if even if though he like has that for like one he has that for one episode if we're <laughs> talking school like gymnasium no playing advance just as they are then obviously Star Lord's gonna win right but like actual time effort John Crane's got it in the back sure yeah I, I can agree with that yeah cause Crichton will do whatever it takes to survive yes. and yes. yeah <laughs> what about <laughs> Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. That's, I was like, yeah. Haven't disagreed so far. No. <laughs> what that we would disagree <laughs> on? Um, just, just wait until the last one. That's, that's where we get into some arguments. Yeah, do we, do you have any, do you have any other, ma- what's another matchup that you have? Oh, yeah, you just went. Yeah, I had Star-Lord versus Crichton. Oh, I don't, I don't think I have another one. That's why I told you to write these down. Listeners, I have a typed out list of matchups here that I put together. Joey said he had a list. He went off. He went on about this list all week. I'm like, all right, 
<laughs> where's your list? And he's like, oh, it's in my head. I really expected to actually argue for the Arthur Fleck one. The penguin one. I thought you thought was... I would say Arthur Fleck? Yeah. Why would I say that? You know I hate that. You know I hate that. I don't know. I don't know. You know I, I know. hate that character. I, I took that, that to be like the pinnacle one. And also I knew that we were going to spend a lot more time with Starbuck and Obi-Wan. But you gave such a pass-by response. It's like, if the Force wants it, <laughs> you know what? If Harvey wants John Crying to win, well, yeah. John Crying to win. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, no. Uh, we can go through a couple others. I have I've got a long list that I didn't mean to go through all of them. Um, I have like a Darth Vader versus Thanos, with or without the Infinity Gauntlet. What's your initial thought on that one? Vader. Vader. Because we see, well, Vader just crush all these big things before. You know what I mean, the Force can just help him choke him or something. I don't know. I don't like with Infinity Gauntlet then. He just kind of has to hold the force to make it be where you can't snap, right? I mean... You're thinking that the only way Thanos would try to win with the Infinity Gauntlet is snap him away? Probably, right? Okay. Depends how many Infinity Stones he has. Sure. I'm, I'm guessing purple obviously would be the one that he would have. Because that's the one that we basically see him have in all of Infinity War. Sure. Okay. I've got a Joker off. Ooh, right, I'm looking forward to this. I was thinking about doing a Joker off, but I said, no, yeah. that's kind of like, but you can, you can see yours. All the live action versions of Joker, so Cesar Romero from the old Adam West yes, yes, yes. ones, with the weird painted over mustache. <laughs> uh, Jack Nicholson from 89, um, who's kind of that sort of like a uh, crime boss. He's more like a yeah. somewhat generic crime boss, yeah. but he has that niche to it, and he has Joker gas. He actually uses like Joker gas and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heath Ledger, who's just a, basically a terrorist. Mm-hmm. Um, Jared Leto, which we've never seen Suicide Squad. We've never Squad. watched Suicide Squad or the new Justice League. Um, and we have, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix's uh, Arthur Fleck, who isn't Joker. Um, then we have Cameron Monaghan and... Uh, what are their names? Because they never call him Joker in Gotham. No. <laughs> We call him, like, in the last episode, he's like, call me Jack. He says that, but he's also, uh, what do they call him? I don't remember his name. <laughs> I don't remember either, but he's Joker. I'm looking it up. Because he plays, like, twins that are Jokers, too, which is pretty funny. Jerome. Jerome. Jerome and Jeremiah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think this is a multi-phase one. Because I think okay. whichever Joker wins this one has to face Jerome when he comes back to life. <laughs> what? So he doesn't like, come back to life. So let's say like Heath Ledger Joker wins, and then it's like, oh wait, Jerome is back to life. How how did this guy come back to life? And let's say Heath Ledger wins again, then he has to fight Jerome. So he has to. So basically, you have to kill Karen Monahan's Joker three times. But because well, because th- what is it? Because in Gotham, what is it? Because who's the first one? Jerome. Jerome is the first one, and he dies he just gets like shot or stabbed what was it i don't remember he dies on stage or whatever Mm -hmm. and then he gets resurrected using um professor strange's technology right Mm -hmm. and then he dies to his brother his brother kills him right who then becomes more of a sophisticated joker more of that sort of science more of like a scientific joker Mm-hmm. Which who more... then also goes into a coma he really revives like four times doesn't he because doesn't jeremiah go into a coma maybe and then comes back in the last episode in the last episode it's so much <laughs> i think so because that's when like because he yeah because at some point he falls into the ace chemicals and then he comes back in the finale okay. where he gets beat by batman right so let's just let's just agree. <laughs> Arthur Fleck first to die. Oh yeah, he's he just gets shot. Sister Romero would shoot him. He'd be the one that's like he like tries to run around in his clown shoes and just bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Caesar Romero Joker would would be the one that kills Arthur Fleck. Um, you think so? They would go surfing. He would have some. As you know, Sharker. Um, what's his name? C- Cicero. El Cicero. Uh, Caesar Romero. What Caesar you Romero. He would just, like, have maybe no Joker spray. So now all the Jokers would just maybe kill him last. No, Batman has the sprays. Joker, I know he might have, would... like, an acid flower. 
Yeah. But even still, I'm not sure about that. What about Jack Nicholson? What do you, where do you think he would fare? Jack Nicholson? Um, I don't think he would win. No, but, like, how do you think... Would he be able to... Because, it, yeah, it's Heath Ledger's Joker probably all the way. Just in terms of... Joker or Gotham? He's got, like... I mean, Heath Ledger or Gotham. That's why I said Heath Ledger, Joker. Yeah, or Gotham. Or Gotham. I think it would be up to those two. Depending on... If we're saying that one has practically four lives, where he dies and <laughs> yes, then comes exactly. back, and then he, like, almost respawns as the next version of that character. Yes. Yes. Right? Unless we want to say both of those Jokers are in there, in which those two are just at it against each other, because they hate each other. Jerome versus oh, Jeremiah, yes. right? Yes. In which those two might, like, even kill each other. I don't know. Yes. Um. And we, th- yeah, we don't know anything about the Jared Leto one. Just that he has a lot of knives that he likes to dance with or something. Mm-hmm. And just lay, and then they're all circle pointed at him. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure he's fine. Jared Leto like and Arthur Fleck ones would like just have a dance. <laughs> yeah, right. They. What if? You know, no, we're gonna fight each other. They're so insane. They, they don't just... actually know what to do, and they just all <laughs> dance by the stairs. And then Heath Ledger just takes out a shotgun. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. Yes. Just yeah. He. <laughs> like everybody else is kind of insane or maybe misunderstood. That's what they kind of are. But, but like, yeah, I would say that Jerome almost matches his insanity in some levels, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah, those are somewhat evenly matched. I just think that in terms of Jerome, in terms of tactical ability, he's not quite as good. In where I think, I like the idea that Heath Ledger's Joker was like some sort of yes. soldier, counter, spy, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really cool idea. So I think he has some amount of training. Yes. I like I like the idea that he used to be a police officer. Hmm. I've never heard that one before. Really? No. Um, yeah, they've said that he was a police officer because apparently he knew a lot of their tactics okay. and stuff. A lot of their routines. Apparently that's because he used to be a police officer. But that's just kind of more theories. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. I but we I- both can agree that Heath Ledger has like actual tactical training of some kind yes versus uh jerome who doesn't jeremiah who went to some sort of boarding school right he lived in the circus jerome one of them did right jeremiah went jeremiah went to like i went like yeah they sent him to some private school and he lived on a bunker for most of his life yeah i don't remember if he really you don't really see a lot of that one is more about setting up difficult situations but yeah, I would. I feel like we let's just say Heath, Heath Ledger, because if we go Cameron Monaghan, everybody would leave the podcast. The Nobody's first knowing. <laughs> Nobody knows that one. Not many people. Yeah, yeah. Let's but just... the people that like that show really like that show. Yeah, I would. I feel so bad for Gotham because Gotham was like the show was like they should do this one thing, like, they should bring in, like a lesser known villain and try to make them be like the big villain of the season. Then they did that, and I'm like, oh, but not like this. <laughs> Which like, one? When they did Ezrael? When they did the Pigma. Oh, uh, what was his name? But yeah, Professor Mr. Pig or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and I just kept on like saying all these cool ideas, like, maybe they should do this. Maybe they should do this. But once they actually started doing it, I'm like, oh, not like this. No, nah, just do what you want to do. <laughs> just do Bruce Wayne. Do the... <laughs> yeah. They should have shifted. That's... They never... Yeah, they kept focusing on... Uh, Gordon a bit too much when we wish that they yeah. shifted the focus a bit more towards Bruce. They did partially that. They did some cool... They had uh, Ra's al Ghul a bit. That was some cool stuff, but they didn't do too much interesting with Bruce's story when they could have. Yeah. I, um, I, I'll, go, I'll go Heath Ledger on this one, just because I feel like that's kind of the safer bet. Don't fidget with the pop filter. What are you doing? Um, Heath Ledger. That's what okay. I'm gonna say. Just at the very least, just because he's he's just more, I think, military trained. Okay. But I don't know. I think he's more so wants to prove a point more than he wants power. Mm. Let's just say I don't know. Um, I've also got I have a stormtrooper versus a Mordor orc. Stormtrooper, because he can just shoot. But can he hit him though? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 
Are we talking about like F one two nine nine or Niners? That I'm saying like an Imperial Stormtrooper. We're not talking about first order stormtroopers. We're saying uh Imperial Stormtrooper. Like an yeah, one that isn't like rebels where it can't hit the main characters for anything. Versus like a mortal orc that say like a Sam or Frodo might have to fight against. Mm-hmm. I think as soon as that orc gets within range, though, like, because even, I mean, even a mortal orc might have a bow and arrow. And we know bows and arrows will work on stormtroopers due to mm-hmm. Ewoks. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a mortal or orc. I think it's an orc wins that. I'm going to say stormtrooper still. I, I think a stormtrooper can actually shoot. I, don't, I think the bit, I think people saying that stormtroopers can actually hit really is not actually that true. I know, like, in Rebels... And Mando, they tease it a lot, but like, I think they're they can shoot. I disagree. Well, I think an orc can also shoot, though. Sure, but you know, if what do you think is going to be faster? Some an orc pulling up a bow and drawing it back, which will take forever, or something just point shoot. Hmm. Again, I don't know. I don't think a stormtrooper can hit it. Um, I've got, I have, okay, this could be an interesting one. I have Stargate Command, okay. So we have Stargate Command, uh, from the show Stargate. They manage the Stargate and all sort of, uh, space threats that could possibly be to Earth. Uh, Stargate Command versus Loki's Invasion of Earth from Avengers. Yeah. That's you want. You think Stargate Command can beat that? Yeah. How? How? I'm gonna need more than one word answers from you. Because if Thor from Asgard, like at Thor, Thor, the alien Thor. Okay. If if that Thor wants a she one to win, do I have him win? Why is this the thing now? Because that's what that's what you said to me on my like my big one. That was my big one What was for Starbuck. Pretty lame big one. It was a great big one. Um, but no. SG-1, because they can probably just go star... Yeah, I mean, they can start... They can explode the star by the... <laughs> no, I was saying that Loki is invading Earth. You can't explode that star. What are you saying? They got Pegasus. They got... Pegasus? Wasn't that the name of the ship? Or do you mean the Odyssey? I think Stargate Pegasus, also has a Pegasus. No, Pegasus also... is the name of the galaxy. Oh, That maybe. they go to. List of Stargate ships. Because they have... They have the Odyssey. They have the Daedalus. And, but we're saying that it's really the Odyssey. Because Odyssey is in charge of defending Earth. Odyssey would be their only defensive starship. Uh, I'm not able to find anything. I'm telling you the answer. I think we're missing one, though. No, then there's the Russian ship that goes there. You're thinking of... Or the Apollo. There was also the Apollo. Yeah. Okay, there's the Daedalus. Odyssey. Korolik, I don't know that one. Yeah, that's the Russian ship that gets blown up as soon as it was commissioned in the Battle of the Supergate. The Apollo. Sun Tzu. Don't know that one. Sun Tzu. That was, you never see it on screen, but it was the Chinese's ship. Okay. The Phoenix? The Phoenix gets, I think, renamed the the George, George Hammond. Hammond, yeah. Yeah, I gotta go sorry on this one. Yeah. You don't think, because what happens, I'm trying to think of, because what do the Shatari have that could possibly, because I think, in a, I mean, because once... Numbers. That's what they have. They have it in terms of once they get on the ground. I don't know what Stargate Command can do once they're on the once the Shatari on the ground, right? First off, Earth, you're about to figure out about the Stargate program. What about aliens? That's really it. But you know, wouldn't I mean, that be right? ironic? Is this invasion happens, but it gets destroyed before anybody figures it out? But again, you know, you know what I'm talking because, like, oh, we've never seen. I don't know if like. Because in terms of ground stuff, right? Yeah. Stargate Command doesn't have anything crazy, anything more 
powerful than just what we have today, right? If anything. Oh, and ground stuff? Right. I mean, they also have the kill literally everything you want to kill. Like, pl- planet. No, we're, that's, no, that's not on Earth. We're talking about things on Earth. I mean, so, just... like, they have the Odyssey and they have whatever they would have in the SGC. I mean, they have the Battle of Antarctica. That's right. They have the drones, wouldn't they? Would they have... Yeah, they could probably find somebody to pilot those, right? Yeah. They would have the Antarctica ancient yeah. drones. Yeah, we would have Rodney's... Like, Why can you use this stuff but not me? <laughs> yeah, I think right there, basically. I f- totally forgot about that you installation. Did? Yeah. Yeah, Loki's invasion. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. That would be a pretty one-shot. Just They just win. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, that, that was basically like, okay, we're finally safe here on Earth. Um, uh, and also, when you're to go destroy that one ship, just throw in a Stargate and have Sam blow up the star. She does it all the time. Did it one time. All the time. Um, I've got another SG-1 matchup. So SG-1, consisting of O'Neill, Carter, Jackson, Tilk. You know, you're pretty standard crew there. Versus an away team from the Enterprise, which would include Riker, Worf, Data, and say a Crusher. Which one wins? Which one I like more? Oh, Stargate. So I have to go. Well, which down. one's gonna win though? Stargate. I I like Stargate a whole lot more. Phasers are weapons of fear. No. P90s <laughs> not true, are though. weapons of war. Phasers are known for being tools, Joey. We all know this. Phasers are meant to be tools. That's why in next generation they're not shaped like guns anymore. They're shaped like remote controls. Yeah. Or like vacuums or something. Yeah. Um Stargate SG one. Still, because their weaponry is better. Is it though? Can a P ninety though beat data? I don't think so. Yes. Why? I don't think so. I don't think because we've seen Data get shot with bullets before, and it hasn't affected him at all. Eventually, that that boy's gonna go fall right down. I don't think so, though. <laughs> Teal'c, Teal'c. He he also has his rifle. I see Teal'c. Yeah. It'd also be a question of can how many shots from a Zat gun? Because mm-hmm. that's Stargate. What are you doing? I, I I'm thinking of a bit. Just just ignore me. Because now you're not paying attention to the I'm discussion. listening, I'm listening. Um, another Stargate one. Uh, Dr. Weir, okay, from S- Stargate Atlantis, also has appearances in mm-hmm. Stargate 1. Uh, versus Jean-Luc Picard in a negotiation battle. A negotiation battle. Right. They, I'm saying, okay, this is my situation. There is an alien race of some kind, doesn't matter what, that they are both trying to recruit into their individual alliances. Right? <laughs> Which one is able to negotiate for this alien race to join them? <laughs> for those of you, I am leaning back in my chair because I got a great answer. <laughs> got a, okay, okay. Well, Picard, obviously. Really? Picard. Okay. Because, Picard, like, look, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Picard a lot of the time. Oh, sh- right, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a lot more of the Cisco guy. Yeah, exactly. Guy. You're the anti Picard. But the one thing Picard is doing <laughs> is negotiations. <laughs> okay. Weir, truly, what has she really done? Like, if we're we're the Jedi, <sighs> yeah, and that ended great, didn't it? Yeah, they won the battle. They won the battle of Atlantis because of her negotiating with the Jedi. I guess, right? I don't know. Just because here's what I would say. I think Picard would think of this as like another day at work. Because Weir will give Picard, uh, Doctor Weir will like is able to give a lot more, I think, to people than, say, maybe a Picard can. Because mm-hmm. Weir has no prime directive she has to follow. She will give them whatever <laughs> C4, or probably not nukes, but, like, maybe technology. Like, some degree of technology. Picard can't give technology away. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, he can't do that, because the prime directive stops that. Mm-hmm. You know, And we've seen Weir negotiate with the go uh, Goa'uld like warlords, and she was really good in that. Because Weir is also like these are two characters that are known for their negotiation tactics. Which Weir? Which which Weir? 
Um, the one now is a brunette or one that's a blonde? Uh, it was in the season after they introduced her, so it's the one. It's the main one that they. They, they like kept the because they, they re- recast. Yeah, nobody's weird. gonna get that. Everybody's gonna get that reference. <laughs> that's, that's 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 weird. It's nobody like, understands. Wait, is that so. supposed to be? Is that supposed to be weird? They just recast her for. It's like yeah, because they already got Sam, who's already blonde. Yeah, you can tell because she's also using a Bluetooth ear device. Yeah, right. That that was the one thing they had in common. <laughs> they looked entirely different. Except well, it they doesn't matter the what earpiece. they look like. I don't like talking. I just feel dumb talking by myself in a room. I feel dumb that she just doesn't. Do- all the time. Um, what else do I've if, got? No. Yeah, yeah, I say we're. I say I vote Picard. Interesting. That's interesting to me. Cause I feel yeah. like it would be the other way around. What do you mean? That Picard can give them whatever they want? No, no, no. No, the idea that you would you would vote for Picard and I would vote for we're. No, I'm all... I think we're can actually give them stuff that Picard can't Picard necessarily Picard would give do. a speech and say, you don't want that technology. Truly, you want us. You think he has the superior... Yes. <laughs> Truly, he is such an intellectual man. Because how many negotiations has he really done, though? I bet this would just be another Saturday morning to him. But, like, in the episode with First... The episode First Contact, not the movie First Contact. Mm -hmm. The episode First Contact, when they meet a new alien race, he's like, we can either stay around, or, like, you know, and you can... We can help you get introduced to the galaxy, you know, and kind of oversee your progression... Or we can leave. Those people decide he doesn't really convince them to leave that or that they should stay around. They tell him get out of here, leave. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't think of many that he's actually negotiated successfully with the whole civilization. I I'm still sticking with Picard. I think Picard's reputation alone qualifies him, and how sometimes Weir does not know what she's doing disqualifies her. Weir. Replicator rear. Remember when she becomes a replicator? Kenny? That's spoilers. Is that spoilers? Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> rear sucks. Eventually in the show. I don't even count that as real. Doctor Weir though. Me neither. Weir died. Stop. Died with Atlantis when that that window exploded. Didn't it? didn't she? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've also got, here's one, Republic Clone Trooper. We've talked about this before. Republic Clone Trooper. Uh, doesn't really matter what phase. Versus a Dominion Jem'Hadar. Two genetically bred soldiers. I don't remember what I said last time. I think I said Clone Trooper. I think so too. I think, I think Jem'Hadar. Clones have been shown to be... I guess it's also true for Jem'Hadar, but... Are we talking about, like, a reg? A clone is just a human. Yeah, a regular. We're not talking about Bad Batch. Are we also... We're we're talking about about White Armor. Republic Commando? No, we're talking about White Armor. Arc Trooper? No. Standard White Armor. They basically, you know... Versus... Yeah, a Jem'Hadar sent from... Yeah, of the Dominion. Bred for battle. Versus Clone Trooper grown in a tube in... On Camino. Mm, I don't know. I think I think I might have a different response than when we ha- originally had this conversation. I think I might have to go a bit with Jem Hadar on this. Yeah, one. yeah, I agree too. They're kind of more just human clones. Well, yeah, that's exactly what they are. Yeah. To to what we know, a regular clone trooper isn't necessarily enhanced in any way. They're trained from birth, but that's also the same thing for Jem Hadar. But also Jem Hadar. How about the fact that Jem'Hadar don't live that long? <laughs> yeah. Do you think that adds or subtracts? I don't. I don't think it matters. You don't think it matters. If they're in a gymnasium, right? Opposite sides of a gymnasium, doesn't matter. But does that add to perhaps possible experience, though? You know what? Tell you what. I'm sticking with my answer. I'm going to say clone trooper. Mm-hmm. Because they've done so many simulations, and I think the better technology to train clone troopers. Star Wars is just superior. Okay. I don't know how they even train Jem'Hadar. Because as long as you don't get close, strength does not really matter. But, again, can a standard clone trooper, is it as good of a shot as maybe a Jem'Hadar with, like, yes, a Polaron so. weapon? I think they use Polaron. I'll say so. Okay. Because I think also Jem'Hadar weapons almost inhibit healing ability. But, yeah, does that matter if you don't get hit? 
Mm-hmm. Um, Jim Hadar also have crazy resistances where they can just push their way through force fields. Mm-hmm. Where I don't know if they, even if they got shot once, right, with a blaster, with a clone trooper blaster, mm-hmm. they might be able to go on f- until they get shot like two more times. Mm-hmm. Let's see how long have we been going. We've been going for a bit over an hour now. Yeah, we can wrap things up. We can go. Well, we can do the final question. We'll do. Or no, I've got one more from some friends of ours. Uh, Samwise Gamgee versus R2-D2. R2-D2. Yeah. Because he can fly, just pour, spill oil. <laughs> fly, fly and ignite the, ignite the oil, yep, you say? Absolutely. Just like, yeah, what he did to the... Okay. Mm-hmm. You think he's really going to just kill Samwise so like that? He's going to burn him alive? R2-D2 is going to be ruthless. <laughs> it's going to be ruthless. Uh, sure. <laughs> I can't really argue with that. Because <laughs> Sam... Yeah, because even if he has the Mithril shirt, which I don't think he ever uses... No. He takes Sting and has the uh, Light of Arendil, right? But that's not really going to do much against Sam Wise? Yeah, Sam does. He has a stupid rope. But I'm saying when he... If we're talking about them at their peak ability, right? So he R2... He doesn't really have a peak ability. I'm saying when he has st- when he's going to go rescue Frodo from the tower, right? So yeah. he has Sting and he has the light of a Rendil, right? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's his peak ability. <laughs> so he has a light and just a rope, <laughs> right? And but yeah, R two with peak ability is like Revenge of the Sith, isn't it? Yeah, Where he's just ruthless. He can fly still in garbage like that. He also can just eject lightsabers. Uh, yeah, but he- we're not saying he has. A- that's not. Nah, we're not saying that. But even still. He would have to have somebody else use the lightsaber, because he doesn't really have hands. He can't really do that with, like, the little things inside of him. He can't really hold a lightsaber. Right. Okay, we are going to get in to our finale. So, our finale matchup is one we have argued about many times in passing. Uh, we're going to put up against each other two classic duos from science fiction. All right, Han Solo and Chewbacca versus James Kirk and Spock. I always say that I think really almost any scenario, James Kirk and Spock win. I, I, I'm very much Chewbacca and Han Solo, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I say? Starbuck and Apollo. No, we're not changing this now. We've talked about this forever. We're doing this topic. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm so going. yeah, Han Solo. So, what what do you think Han Solo and Chewbacca can do against Kirk and Spock? Come on, Chewbacca, general. Okay. Military general. Okay. Okay. What battles has he won? Every one. <laughs> he hasn't won. Like... He's met Yoda. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah, Yoda Great. Great. defends slavery. Yeah. <laughs> In that book that we were talking about. Is it canon? No. There's it's no way canon. that's going to be canon. It's There's totally no canon. way that's going to be canon. Um, Han Solo lived on the streets, right? Eventually, Imperial training. He got trained as a stormtrooper. That's not, that's not entirely true. He got trained as a, what, a fighter pilot for like five minutes, and then they're like, you're too rogue. <laughs> we're going to send no, you to no, the troopers. No, he was really close, I think, due to the deleted scene of him actually... Mm, that's a deleted scene, though. Yeah, you don't you don't consider it canon? Not really, not necessarily. It, it, it basically made it seem like he like just got to that planet. I disagree. So it's like Chewbacca just rips off Spock's arms, beats beats him with it. I don't think because, and we're also going into it now. Now you're saying though that they're disarmed, that they don't have any weapons on them. Hmm. Well, That's what but, your assumption is. I mean, we can we can do we can do blaster fight, blaster versus phasers though. I would say I'll take James Kirk Han Solo, hand to hand combat. Kirk wins. Yes, because because Kirk has fought Gorns, <laughs> has fought giant lizard men, and other alien races. Yes, hand to hand, he's able to fight that. <laughs> he can fight that any day of the week. He'll yes. fight that fight yes. with easily. Han yeah. Solo gets in what one fist fight, right? He punches some people. He gets in one fist fight, and he gets in one fist fight against a stormtrooper, some scout trooper in the indoor, mm-hmm. and it takes him like forever to fight that guy. 
Yeah, I mean, he is not... He's also, like, if it was Blaster to his phaser, Han Solo would just shoot first. No. Yes. No. Yes. Shooting... F- no. That's yeah. not canon, John. It is. It's not, though. Solo Star Wars story. He shot first there. Hmm. He did. Against Beckett. He did a quick draw right there. Now are we saying... But now we're saying... Because if you're doing... Alden Ehrenreich Han Solo. Then I'm doing. Then I'm doing Chris Pine, <laughs> Captain Kirk. It's all. It's all the same. It's all the same continuity. <laughs> okay, so it's still recasting though. <laughs> that doesn't matter. That that truly doesn't which, matter. In which show we have? Because those are two Spock. We have Zachary. We have Zachary Kinto Spock. You're basically saying who fought Khan? He fought Khan hand to hand, Joey. He's doing nerve. He's doing like actual martial arts, <laughs> like nerve pinches and stuff. I feel like that's a bit different. I think Zachary Kinto timeline. destroys, uh, not destroy, but he definitely takes down Chewbacca. No, Zachary. No. Yeah, I think so. Zachary or Levi. Zachary Kinto. No. Yeah, I would still vote no, but that's that's still a bit different because they're younger in there. What but yeah, you you're think? saying a younger Han Solo. Versus what an older like Captain Han Solo Kirk would still do that in like Empire Strikes Back though. I mean, I'm, like a New Hope, he would still have that sort of. Except level. he didn't. Except he didn't shoot first <laughs> in A New Hope. I mean, he shot first in Solo. Right. So then we're talking about reboot ones. You no, either have to pick. To you either have to pick. You, not, you either have to pick young Han Solo or old Han Solo. You do not need to pick. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes, we're yeah. We do not. Yeah, I, I I cannot disagree more. We can. We do not need a pick because you're comparing, right? You're pi- you're comparing a, a separate young... timeline of a dead part of the franchise. But we will never. It's not go like back his DNA has changed, Joey. He's is younger, Joey. You... He is younger. That's also JJ Jar Jar Abrams. <laughs> That's oh Jar gosh. Jar Abrams. He ruined Star. Let's Wars. not make this a political discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't political. <laughs> It's might, might as well be. <laughs> I, <laughs> Compared to how people start talking about that on Reddit and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is. Might as well be political. Jar Jar Abrams. But I is, like Jar Jar Abrams. It is. You're I comparing like a young, a younger version of Han Solo versus a older Captain Kirk. So why can't I compare a younger Captain Kirk versus a, a younger First Han off, Solo? Those are entirely due to... But, two different characters. No, they're the same guy. They're entirely they're the, different. They're basically they both cheated on their tests. <laughs> they're they're entirely different. I don't I don't think so. No. No, the real changes to their characters come after the destruction of Vulcan, in my opinion. Absolutely not. You don't think not having a father influences Even still, Captain say Kirk? it's say it's um younger. It's still he's in Chris Pine's body, but it's still the same. Shut up. <laughs> it's no. still the same. We're not mashing up. Dude. They're different characters. But you're still doing young Han Solo. I don't see the point. Okay, let's not talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi. But, like, when we talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi, you can only think original series. And you can't think of prequels. It's basically that. What do you mean? Like, it's a prequel. It's the same character, same timeline. We're gonna see all generic... Right? Like, it's I, a complete... I'm also I saying that not. it's a different interpretation of these characters, Joey. Because you can't, you couldn't have had a character that did those sort of crazy, that could do like different sorts of martial arts or whatever in, was it the 60s or whenever original series was around? The 70s. Yeah, you can't, couldn't do that back then. So comparing those two is not fair. I'm I, saying I it's a more fair comparison to compare <laughs> Chris Pine. In, folks, we're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> That's what it's I'm gonna saying. It's going to be our hour and a half podcast i'm saying you we're, we're gonna be talking we're gonna I'm, I'm not laying this one we'll go. edit this down i'm gonna cut out some, no no, no. you're stuff. not cutting out my my stuff <laughs> not your stuff we'll probably cut out the boring topics no no, no. we're keeping the return of starbuck in no i know we'll cut out like the thanos versus darth vader discussion really i know i think we should keep that one okay then we'll keep it in we're keeping all this in so we're saying harrison ford and peter mayhew chewbacca or Hansel and Chewbacca, versus William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, Kirk and Spock. No, we... It's... You're so <laughs> dumb. You you're mean? so dumb. You're so dumb. You're... You're giving me a headache. But you're making it unfair to me, though. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Han Solo... Because you're doing a younger embodied Han Solo versus an older embodied Kirk. 
That's not fair. No, it will be Harrison Ford. But I'm saying that he would still be able to shoot first. He'd have that experience, though. Okay, sure. But by first. the time he's okay, Harrison okay. Ford, you tell, he's not shooting first. You tell <laughs> everyone. You tell every sci-fi lover, hey, who would shoot first? Han Solo or Captain Kirk? You you are in the minority. Okay, let's just agree on that. Fact. Okay, Please. even if... Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> even if Han Solo sh- somehow shoots first, which is... <laughs> Yes, I don't know. He will. He absolutely and hits, will. And hits, say, a Kirk. Okay. He did it. He did it before. Maybe okay. He was younger. Even still, Spock with a phaser, wide beam setting, disintegrates both of them. Not? What do you mean? Can phasers do wide yes, beam in the yeah. original series? Yep. In... One of your favorite episodes, Piece of the Action, they discuss the heaters can disintegrate entire sides of buildings. That's true. So, yes, they can. Have we seen it, though? I mean, you see sort of... I mean, the effects always look like they're wide beam in all those. So, to me, yeah, they do. But that's just the time. I know. That's what I'm talking about, though! And they also changed it. And they also changed it. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. They also about. changed it so it's not that way and it's a beam. So let's just treat it as if no, it's a beam. No, a in, remastered in the original movie. version, it was just the whole screen, like, flashed. I All right, think. and the original version, Han Solo shot first. <laughs> okay. Just saying. Just saying. Because we're going back to how it is in the original version. <laughs> Han Solo shot no, first. No, I'm saying that in the original version, because you said in the times that that was just how they showed it was a wide beam. But I'm, I'm saying that that's bad. not true. That the ori- in the original version, it didn't really show a wide beam setting. I think just the whole screen flashed, like, blue yes. and green. Yes. In the remastered versions... It's, which is more akin to, say, when Han Solo doesn't shoot first. <laughs> it just looks like a wide sort of beam, like a cone shoot. From what I remember, I haven't watched some of those for a while. Oh, no. No, they're beams. I believe they're beams. Who Who's watched those more recently? You or me? You pull up an episode. <laughs> you pull up an episode. Ed. Yeah, it's so, it's got like... They, they show a couple of different shots in this one video that I just looked at. And yeah, some of them are like a beam, and others are a cone. So they have multiple settings. <laughs> okay. We're saying they have multiple settings. Spock, wide beam setting, disintegrates both of them. Even if Han Solo shoots one of them first. Okay. Um, we see Han Solo do some stealth, though. We mean stealth. We're just saying they both show up on opposite sides of a school gymnasium, and they see the other one like, I have to kill or stop that other person. What do you mean stealth? <laughs> you know, what do you do there? It's a well-lit gymnasium, too. Like, all the lights are on. Um, I think if it's like a force, if it's like a force or something, Han Solo, we see on Endor, he can, he can take him on, right? Uh, no. Because tricorders. They would just scan around? They would just, well, you can detect, like... I Chewbacca forget. Gets I'm close, to remember. And Han Solo shoots Kirk before but, then. Because with a because they detect like enemies not within visual range with those tricorders. Sure. So whatever stealth original you're talking series about. tricorders. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I guess we do see it. Was that one episode where it was like the giant monster and they're like on the crash shuttle on the planet? Um, Galileo Seven. I think, I think so. that's the name of the episode. But yeah. Yeah, but yeah, even when with the Gorn, they talk about being trying to do that too. It's in all those episodes. <laughs> They're like okay. tracking life forms with tricorders, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, st- your stealth isn't gonna work, even with that. No, I, I'm, I'm still very much. So that's with How equipment. You both? With equipment, no, <laughs> no, those blasters. We don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, if you shoot one, you can shoot. We're almost saying it's like initiative order, <laughs> where you sh- he shoot. We're saying he rolls the highest initiative and gets a shot off. <laughs> and then maybe. And he has Eldritch Blast, so we can shoot twice. <laughs> no, no. Look, if you want to pull D and D logic, which is not fair here, <laughs> it's not fair. It's he really would, he would be able to shoot twice on this move. <laughs> no, because you you just said he's a rogue. <laughs> Rogues don't get multiple <laughs> attacks. I mean, he's okay at stealth. He's better at stealth than Kirk and Spock are. Okay. That's what I was trying to say. He's okay. no stealth. Yeah, but why does stealth matter when <laughs> it doesn't matter? 
don't know. If I'm, I think the original time we talked about this subject, because we've talked about this subject on very many occasions, okay? Yeah. And, I, and I know my brother's answers and stuff, so I came prepared, okay? So far, I feel like I've never really convinced my brother of this. All right. Yes. Nobody has ever convinced. I've also brought this up with some other people on, like, Discord and things. Yes. <laughs> and they would also start off with that, but I usually can convince them that perhaps it isn't one... It's not as easy as you think. Because usually those people just don't know anything about Star Trek technology. That's true. That's the true. people that disagree, they're just like, oh, a blaster is going to, you know, just shoot them. It's like... But those people don't know about how phasers are way more complex in terms of what they can do than a blaster Mm -hmm. or tricorders or anything like that or in terms of Vulcan because you haven't brought up I guess you brought up the thing about Chewbacca ripping off Spock's arms I think that's what it comes down to is that how strong are Vulcans compared to Wookiees I don't think Vulcans are stronger than Wookiees absolutely not but I think in terms of their martial their like martial arts abilities and their telepathic abilities, I think that evens the fight. And where I think if Spock somehow gets a hand on Chewbacca, he goes down. Because because of the nerve pinch, which is basically an instant knockout. I don't I don't think he would be able to. I th- I think it's a possibility. Or he could also do a, some sort of telepathic thing. We also don't really see Spock really do that many martial arts stuff in the original series. We do enough. We see him do enough fighting. There's the episode where uh, it's Kirk and Spock with Abraham Lincoln and Sark or Sarak, not Sark, Sarak on some planet that they have to fight history's most evil villains. Mm-hmm. And you see him have to fight like hand to hand and with spears and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty good episode. Yeah. <laughs> They just find Abraham Lincoln floating on his face in, like, a chair. <laughs> and they beam him aboard. <laughs> He's just like, I'm Abraham Lincoln. We're cutting this out. We're cutting no, this. this is hilarious. <laughs> no, no not, not just you laughing about Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair in space. This is what the people want. Is, is this this is what they want? Abraham yeah. Lincoln? No. Um, I'm... Look, Hans shot first. Could you shoot both? Let's say for the sake. Stop fidgeting. First off, do you do you agree? Han Solo can take out at least one of them first. If they have weapons, maybe. Maybe not a not an absolute. Yes. Not an absolute yes, because he is known. He's not known for every time shooting first. It's when like it matters. Fifty percent of the time. When it matters. When it matters. When the, what does that mean though? <laughs> of course, when when Greedo. You can't say missed. he didn't shoot first when he died. And to be fair, if you actually watch it, Greedo and Han Solo shoot at the same time. What? They shoot at the same time. What? Okay. No, Han Solo would shoot first. But, again, even if he does, and he hits, say, the range of your average school gymnasium, <laughs> he hits. Okay. With that, was it the DL-44? You don't, you don't need to remember the blaster. It's Han's blaster. Yeah, with that little pistol. Which comes from a bigger rifle, yes. Again, you bring in solo Star Wars story stuff. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> no, whoa! I'm joking about that I, one. I can't believe... I'm, jo- I can't believe- <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me think. Is a phaser... Pi- I don't think the pistol is a bar of a larger phaser, is it? I don't think so. I haven't seen it. I don't think the phaser... I don't think a Type 2 phaser is a part of a Type 3 phaser. Because a Type 1 phaser is a part of a Type 2. And this is boring to talk about. Yeah. Viewers are asleep. <laughs> Wake up, viewers. They're smashing their phones. <laughs> They're smashing their phones. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? If the Force wills Han Solo and Chewbacca to win. Ah, but the for- Han Solo has absolutely no connection to the Force. As George Lucas has said. Yeah, that's true. So the Force has no connection to Han Solo I think, winning. I think that he kind of does. But, like, George Lucas kind of has to say it because he's like, can, I, can Han Solo use the Force? And they're just like, please, I don't want to hear this anymore. <laughs> so he just said that. <laughs> just so it's dead and in the ground. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, think I could understand. Every single person has some sort of connection with the Force. 
Han Solo, if, if there's a chart, he probably has some. <laughs> he just isn't zero, done, nothing. He has like, he has like one midichlorian yeah. <laughs> in his blood. It's like, wow. As opposed to Anakin, who has the most midichlorians. Yes. <laughs> Somebody takes a sample of Han Solo's blood, like, wow, this is the least of the <laughs> midichlorians I've ever seen. Yes, exactly. I don't think, I don't, I think that's a bit of a stretch for George Lucas to say. I don't think he really <laughs> meant it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Where are we at? Okay, so what about... We've also talked about this discussion, right? The two of them... The two pairs, okay? The two duos. They're on, like, a... In, like, the wilderness. They're on, like, a deserted planet or something. And they, you know, they're spawned, like, kind of randomly in, like, a certain area. Mm-hmm. And they kind of have to forge themselves. They have to forge and kind of make do with the wilderness to win a fight. Okay. Who wins that fight? I still say Kirk and Spock. Because we've seen them do stuff like that before, where they've been just kind of trapped out in the wilderness, and they've made, like, bows and arrows. I think as soon as they make bows and arrows, they win. Because we've seen them make bows and arrows of, like, sticks and stuff. Sure. And then they've shot, like, enemy, like, aliens that are, like, twice their size. I truly feel like this is a complex question. Okay. So I think Han Solo and Chewbacca would absolutely make friends with the natives. No, there's no natives. There's no natives. No, these aliens... They're, they're these, bending the circumstances. No, they're the, I never said it. it. would be... The aliens that... there The would-be aliens would be aliens like... Uh, that are like... Otherworldly, where they just kind of teleport them <laughs> to this planet and they don't want anything. Mm-hmm. They just want to see these two people fight. In the contest of which science fiction <laughs> duo is better. Basically, though... With with your circumstance of the Gorn, with Kirk, the Gorn was very very slow and not very smart. Chewbacca once again. You don't think the Gorn is as smart as say a Chewbacca? No. Chewbacca's, Why is that? I think I really do think that Chewbacca. At least the Gorn made a weapon military. when Chewbacca was trapped on a hunting planet. He didn't even make a weapon. No, he probably won't make a weapon. Han Solo will probably make a weapon. We've, I don't know. Do you have any proof that Han Solo can make weapons? I think he would find something. I'm not saying that's gonna. He'd be... have like a rock, maybe. He probably won't make a bow and arrow. Right, he can't make a bow. And Definitely arrow. not. When it goes in that intellectual fight, obviously Hans, um, Hanso, in getting to getting stuff like that, or Chewbacca making stuff, probably not gonna be as well advanced. Right. But I still say, stealth in their favor, probably. Right. That would be where. Can you really stealth as a Wookiee though? I mean, it would be more so like. Maybe Han Solo jumping on, hiding up in a tree, jumping they do on. This, but Kirk, Kirk and Spock do the same thing, though, in those episodes. At least Kirk does. He gets the jump on Gorn and whatever else they did fight. They'll just be both sitting on trees, just like, all right, we're going to wait for them to come around. <laughs> <laughs> well, the opposite ends of, like, this map. <laughs> they won't start camping. <laughs> they won't find me Yeah, because Kirk and Spock, again, in that one episode... They usually find, like, something they would use as a base, like a fallback position. Yep. Again, I don't know if Chewbacca and Han Solo would care. I feel like they would get cocky. It's like, we got Chewbacca. We got the mighty Chewbacca. We don't, doesn't matter. And they would go in. I think he. I think Han Solo, ironic for, for, for me to say this, because I think maybe maybe this is where I could be wrong. Han Solo, not a very cocky guy. Don't get <laughs> cocky, kid. I think that's what he says, right? That's his, that's his famous line. So he's not going to really jump the gun on that one. I don't think he's overly confident. I don't know about... Um, I'm trying to think of any situations. He's totally cocky. He did. He totally ran. Like, started running through those right. walls. Right, that's a meal. Like, oh, like, oh, wait, there's, all, there's like 80. He ran into the, like, thousand stones. I think that's, like, the funny ones. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That, that That's... It's like, we got him on the run, finally. And <laughs> he chases him, and then suddenly... Oh! I think that's very... I think that's probably the cockiest thing. That's like thing definition of Han Solo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's very like, fun. I, that's an iconic Han Solo moment and therefore is a part of his personality. I say he would, Han Solo would just tap Kirk on the shoulder and then when he turns around the corner, we got Chewbacca, Bolt Caster, blast him. No, that's Joey. Now we're doing armed stuff. I know, though. I know. That was, I, I just said it for the joke. Because at that very, point, uh, you had it. That was another classic Han Solo moment and I, sure. wanted, to, I wanted to highlight that moment. But that's also... You also say, oh, Han Solo, good at stealth. When he's walking up on one of those guys, he steps on a twig. And then the guy turns around and is like, <laughs> hits him. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, you're right, Hansel. Excellent at stealth. <laughs> Stuff's on a twig, Joey. That's fine. <laughs> it's not stealth, though. He's fine at stealth. What are you talking I mean, about? He's not master stealth. <laughs> He's not master stealth. Everybody, you've heard me say that. He's not master stealth. But is he going to be better at stealth than maybe Kirk? I think they're going to be the same. I think they're going to be the same thing. I think they're stealth-wise, that stealth doesn't even play a, a thing in this. Basically, basically, this is what would happen. Kirk, right? He's going to be probably having the upper hand of, of Han Solo, right? He's doing He's the, be... the double-fisted the double yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hitting him. Right? Yeah, exactly. The uppercut. And he just has to kind of make it, kind of like fight back enough. So Chewbacca's finished with Spock. Spock in pieces. Again, it comes down to, can, in a melee, can Spock fight melee with Chewbacca? In which I say, it's a lot closer fight than people think. Where it's like almost up to a coin toss as to who wins. Um, somebody, send me a photo of, you know like when Chewbacca grabs Lando by like the head? Like, and just choking him, it's like, Get me Han or whatever, you know. I want, I want, I want Spock to be the guy just screaming, "Give me Han!" <laughs> and it's like Chewbacca just strangling him. But you don't think you don't think that any part of I almost want to look up how strong the Vulcans are, because I'm pretty Vulcan. sure we see Vulcans bend metal, or I might be thinking of Data. But I'm pretty sure we see Vulcans like look. It's not. It's, perform it's not some close. crazy act of strength. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. I would say Vulcans are slightly weaker than Klingons. Again, also to say this, this isn't meant to be like, oh, I love Star Trek more than Star Wars. Oh, yeah, obviously. None obviously. of this is meant to be that. We both love both of these franchises oh, yeah. with, like, completely. Yeah. I love the silliness of, like, Star Trek and the, the uh, what's it, the more fantastical parts of Star Wars. Yeah. We love these both. Yeah. I'm just trying to look at it from... Yeah. The perspective of... I would say yeah, the only that. franchise that we didn't love that we talked about here today was maybe, like... We don't love Invincible or maybe The Boys. And we both... I love Invincible. Well, Invincible is tough. Because it only has one season. But I really like Invincible. Yeah. And we also... And we both equally hate Reboot Battle Star Galactic. I'm, a, I'm indifferent about that it's, one. It's bad. It's a bad show. Return of Starbuck, though. That episode coming out real soon on our discussion with that show. See so, yeah, how long have we been going on this discussion? We've been going about thirty minutes on this. Okay, you know what? <laughs> on this discussion. All right, let's just let's just call it here. Let's call it here. We'll we'll be back. I'm sure we're, we'll be back. I'm sure, at some point, yes, we will return to this conversation. If you guys have any other input, put in the comments. Tell you I what, guess. Tell you what, when we see Audrey and Aaron Wright come back, as Han Solo, which I would which I would claim to be inevitable, we will see him again. What about Spock in um, Discovery? When he kills like that whole room when he has people. A, when he has a beard, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll see younger Spock in um, New Worlds, right? Yeah, we would. So we'll see about that guy and how strong he is in there. Maybe he bends. That is metal. the timeline, but most and... people consider that not canon anyway. <laughs> well, people say everything. <laughs> people will say anything's not canon. People say Last Jedi is not in my canon. Yeah, that's mm. dumb. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's like dumb. it's a movie. Get over it. People felt the same way about <laughs> Phantom Menace. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Uh, uh, all that would be... I won't defend all of Season. Last Jedi's faults, yeah. but it's a movie. <laughs> Just live with it. I'd say it's a great movie. You really like Last Jedi. I'm I'm not sure if indifferent, but <laughs> it's got stuff that I like, and it's got stuff I don't like. I think I think the critics... Let's move on. Of... No, let's just move on. Again, that's... <laughs> That almost reaches a political discussion. It does? It, it can. Oh. Again, oh, yes, on Reddit, yes, dude, yes. it might as well be a political yes. discussion. Yes. All right. So we'll go into upcoming podcast news. Um, We have a lot of topics we hope to discuss on this podcast, right? Yeah, like such as the return of Starbuck. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, going to be pushing this for years. Yeah, this is going to be your long-term bit. Um. But right now we're watching what Bad Batch. We yeah. it was just the third episode that came out, right? Um, and so when Bad Batch wraps up, we'll probably do a review of that, right? Yeah. And maybe at some point we'll do like a cl- like we'll look back over our views of like Clone Wars and stuff as a run up to that, right? Um, in terms of movies, right? What movies are we looking forward to, Joe? Could you Black Widow? Is it worth it? Is yeah, it we'll do some Marvel, right? We'll do our because you you've always you've been saying that 
you don't have too much interest in the future of the MCU anymore. No, I don't. I really don't. Loki. Loki I think there could Loki. be. Yeah, I think there could be some interesting stuff. So we'll probably talk about Marvel at some point with Loki and you know those. The only I would say the three things I care about is Loki, Doctor Strange, and the next Spider Man. And then there's Dune. Which both of us are very new to Dune. Um, I know literally nothing. I see that they have nose plugs. Um, where I am currently reading the book for Dune in preparation for the new uh, Dennis Villeneuve. I forget the name. But the guy who did Blade Runner. You, Joe, you've seen Blade Runner 2049. Yep. It's the guy who did that movie. Who I'm lo- really looking forward to this Dune. Because I think it'll be a really sort of science fiction um, phenomenon of our time right now. It's got a crazy cast. So I think at some point I'm gonna once I finish reading the book, the first book, Dune, we are gonna re we are gonna watch the um the David Lynch version of Dune. And I'm gonna get your reaction to that. We're gonna do a like a retro review of that. I'm looking forward to getting your reaction to that Dune. Because that movie's weird. <laughs> That's a weird movie. It's about some guy that loses his mind in space. That's like, just like screaming and like, I'll blow everyone up. Everybody's crazy in that movie, dude. <laughs> Everybody's insane. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of topics that we hope to do in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's any other topic ideas, make sure to post them wherever you can. Uh, we also hope to start posting these episodes to places like Spotify in the future as we get our official website up and running. But because currently right now I'm just gonna be uploading this to YouTube, with like a some sort of screen overlay. Um, that's all I've got. Unless do you have anything, EXO? I don't think I have anything. You can take it away, Captain. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faster Than Lightspeed podcast. Check us out on Twitter, where we will eventually post news and info about the show and how to listen to more episodes. This has been your Captain Kenny with my EXO, Joey. And this has been the Faster Than Light Speed Podcast.